Hey there everyone, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships and let's see what's on the bench this week. This week on the bench I shell the 1000 scale Enterprise D project. The Enterprise E that went out to a client quite a while ago comes back in the shop for some repairs. Yet another Enterprise E gets ready for paint and yet a third Enterprise E has windows being drilled out for a lighted project. Let's get right at it. But before we get started, why not take a moment and click the subscribe button. And while you're here, click on that notification bell so you don't miss a single video. The 1000 scale Enterprise D project. So you're probably asking yourself, Andrew, why are you shelving the big 1000 scale Enterprise D project? You've been working on it forever. Well, there is a very good answer to that question. You see the Don Shoko Enterprise D that I've been working on is about two feet long and it is considerably larger than the 1400 scale round two Enterprise D model that's commercially available. And I've just heard rumor that round two is going to be repopping that kit soon, which is great to hear because it is way too expensive to buy secondhand now online. The price has just gotten ridiculous. So two feet long for the Don Shoko Enterprise D. Now that is a large Enterprise, but it's not anywhere near the size that my client really, really wanted. Now, I can't really get the size that he really wants because I'm sure he would absolutely love to have the full six foot studio scale model, which just simply is not available. But there's a brand new kit that has just hit the market that is 650 scale. So that is in line size wise with the big Enterprise E kit that I have, the one that was originally put out by Sovereign uh, Replicas and is now being produced by someone else. It is a good size kit. It's also an expensive kit and by the time this video goes out, pre-sales for this kit have probably closed. It's a very small window to be able to get your hands on this model. The moment I told my client about it and offered an upgrade, he jumped on it. So we are shelving the Don Shoko Enterprise for now because we have ordered and are waiting on this big 1650 scale Enterprise D kit to come in that we are gonna work on and which will go to that very client. Now that means that we have a couple months of downtime before that project comes in. And I have several other projects on the bench that I need to get completed. And so we're gonna try something a little bit new. We're gonna do these weekly-ish sort of update videos on basically everything that's going on on the bench whether that's the main project that I'm working on that I'm doing videos specifically about, where you might get some spoilers for the next update, and where you're gonna be able to see some of the other projects that are going on on the bench. And so that is kind of the idea with this whole video series. So Enterprise D 1000 scale is on the shelf waiting for the brand new kit to come in. And I promise you, I will show you every detail about that kit as soon as it comes in. There's a couple of things I almost forgot to mention about that new Enterprise D project. The first is that it looks like it's much more well engineered. There are a couple areas on the Don Shoko D that just gave me so many headaches. The connection between the pylons and the secondary hull is a horrible seam on that Don Shoko kit. There just isn't really a ton of support and so you really really have to work hard on that seam to one make sure it's structurally sound and two to make sure that that seam disappears. The other area on the Don Choco D that is problematic is the nacelles themselves. They are completely done in two pieces top and bottom and split in the center of the chiller grills. The nacelles on the new kit are actually three pieces. You've got bottom, top and chiller grill in between so you don't get a nasty seam right in that chiller grill. So the connection between the secondary hull and the pylons is much better engineered on this new kit and so are those nacelles and so I'm really looking forward to some of these well-engineered components. There's things that I just wish had been done on the Don Shoko D. The other thing that I need to mention is that although I am shelving the Don Shoko D for now, it is not being permanently shelved. It will be completed. Now because my client 
who had the Don Shoku D on order is upgrading, that means that the Don Shoku D will now be available for anybody who wants it. So if you are interested in having that completed Don Shoku D project, you can email me contact at canadianstarships.com and I will give you the details on that. Enterprise E Repair If you've been following my channel for a while, you will recognize this lovely lady. This is the Enterprise E that we did the last major project on the channel, and what was unique about this, especially at the time, is that all of the Aztec detailing on this ship is painted, hand-masked, everything. And at the time, everybody was telling me that that was impossible to do. Now, I've got some repair work to do on this particular ship, and the story is that the client lost the power supply, the 9-volt power supply, and thought that it would be okay to replace that power supply with a 12 volt. Now, this was all stress test. The electronics were stress test uh, so that they would stand up to that for short periods of time. However, he then allowed it to run for an excess of six hours at a time, which burnt out a whole bunch of the electronics. So he popped it open to replace the LEDs and put a new electronics brain in, etc. But now it's up to me to repair the damage that was done in that process. So some of the main areas that we have to work on are the main seam around the saucer. So that has to be dealt with and we may need to redo the Aztec detailing along the edge panel here in order to do that. We'll see what absolutely necessarily has to be done. There's some work that needs to be done on the leading edges of the pylons. As it heated, some of the clear coat uh, became uh, gummy, became soft and sticky, and so there's some damage that was done in these pylons due to that. The chiller grill Photo etch needs to be re-secured down here. And one of the big things that needs to be done is that the neck piece here needs to be reset in. Now this was originally set into place with Micro Crystal Clear in case it ever did need to be popped in order to access anything internally. But uh, that should be a decently easy fix. It'll just need to be put back down and some, uh, some painting work done there. So. On this project, we need to do some of that repair work, and there's some repair work that might need to be done in some of the decal work. As you can see, part of the pinstriping on the back is missing. So we'll need to go over this with a fine-tuned comb and just make sure that we find everything that needs to be dealt with on this project. There's even some of the, the uh, detailing in here that just needs to be touched up. Um, this is actually a decal, so we might need to strip that decal off and put a new one on there. We shall see what's necessary for that. So I'm going to go over this completely, see what all needs to be taken care of, but that's one of the projects on the bench that needs to be worked on. First steps of repair are done. I've resat the neck piece in here, and it sits down really nicely all on its own once it's positioned properly. You can see that there's a considerable gap here, so I will need to lightly fill this gap and then I'll need to touch up the paint all the way around there and that'll be the neck taken care of. If you look over on this side we've got the chiller grill which has come off of the nacelle completely and you can see the uh, electronics work that the client did in here replacing those LEDs. Now the chiller grill itself so not only were the pieces, the metallic photo etch pieces needing to be replaced, the actual whole chiller grill itself came off. So I am doing these one side at a time because they are very finicky and they need a little bit of loving attention. Uh, Resecuring those down. Those are being resecured down with Micro Crystal Clear. One of the nice things about the Micro Crystal Clear is that it dries crystal clear and so you cannot see the adhesive and so you can actually apply it from both the top and the bottom and you will not see it once it is fully dried. So I've got one side repositioned down. I will reposition down the other side and I'm going to need to resecure it onto the nacelle. <laughs> The other side of the chiller grill has been secured down. I'm going to let that dry out over on the side 
And now I'm gonna turn my attention to the saucer. This was clearly popped open to replace the lighting inside the saucer and has not been fully secured down yet. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take some of my CA glue and I'm going to lay in some CA glue into this seam. And you can see if I just push on this a little bit, it exposes that loose seam in there. And let that settle in, find its placement, uh, and let that cure. And then that'll be nice and securely closed back up. Then I will go through, clean up this seam right here, try to avoid the detailing if I can, um, and uh, get that touched up with paint. First round work on the putty on this seam is done. I'm using perfect plastic putty in this case because it is delicate work. The perfect plastic putty can actually be smooth sanded out using water and uh, paper towel or water and a Q-tip or something like that. And so I'll be able to get in there and smooth that out delicately without damaging any of the paint work that is around there. Then I can mask that off and just give the edge a uh, recoat of the body color. So that should work out quite nicely. A couple things to show you now. I've got initial putty work done on the neck piece. It looks a little rough, but as I said, I'm using the perfect plastic putty and that'll smooth right out with a little bit of water on, in this case, probably on a Q-tip. I've also managed to get the chiller grill reinstalled on the starboard nacelle. I am noticing that I am missing the dark strip going down here. I can't remember whether I missed that the first go around or whether that's come off somehow, but I'll look to see if I can create a decal that'll just go down there to create that dark stripe down the center of the nacelle chiller grills. Enterprise E static build. Next on the bench this week is a static build of the Enterprise E. And that just means that there are no effects, no lighting. It is just the static model. What I've done so far is all of the construction. Everything's been put together and boy, does that go together so much faster when you're not dealing with lighting and effects and all those kind of things. Now the saucer has had all the windows masks with black primer underneath. So when those get pulled later, all the windows are going to be black. That is as the client has requested. It is uh, got a, an initial paint coat on it. I was testing out some colors, not happy with it yet. So I'm sanding some of that down a bit to reduce how much of the uh, paint layers are on the model and I'm going to uh, give it another go of coloring. This is not going to be the insignia white that the uh, previous Enterprise E is. It's going to be a bit more of a brighter tone uh, to look more as the studio model pictures do in the pictures outside in the California sun. So that is what we are working on right now and I'm just in the process of sanding down uh, there was a little bit of paint reaction in a couple areas with a couple different types of paints as I was testing some things. So I'm just sanding those areas down specifically back here. And you might be able to see some of it still back here. So sanding that down so that I don't have any issues on that. Still lots of work to do and you'll see more progress on this in the coming weeks. Enterprise E lighted build. And since we are on the topic of Enterprise projects, the last project on the bench this week is yet another Enterprise E. Shocker, I know. This one is going to be a fully lighted model similar to this one over here, except that it'll have some additional features which will be using the Arduino board with the programming from my programmer in the Netherlands. So we are at the phase where we are simply in window world on this kit. Lots of windows on this side have been done. They are nice and clean. I can even bring it super close to you so you can see just how nice and clean those windows actually are. I have yet to do the large four windows up front here, which you will notice on the completed Enterprise E. You've got the four big windows up front. I have yet to do those. Quick side note, this is one of the first times that I've had these two windows turn out successfully. The first go, they are poorly molded and they're very tricky to get cut out without breaking the gap in between them. Over on this side, we've got the windows which are missing on the kit. Now my approach on this version of the kit is a little bit different than my approach on the previous model. I have cut out a larger section and I've just gone ahead and filled this in with resin here. 
so it is nice and flush on the outside. And I'm going to use window masks. Since I've got the window masks already printed uh, for this one, I can put my window masks down here. And while the other windows are gonna remain open until the end, and I'll fill those with Michael Crystal Clear, these ones will be masked, and when the painting is done, I will remove the mask. And that's gonna create the most accurate windows possible in this area. Windows turn out really, really well when they are molded in and you have a guide as far as where to go. They don't turn out quite as well if you're trying to freehand those. So this is going to be the best option for this. So currently in Window World, so any spare moment that I have on the bench where I'm waiting for the other projects to uh, either something to cure or set or dry or whatever, I'm working on Windows. And that's about going to wrap it up for this week's update on what's going on on the bench at Canadian Starships. I hope that you like this little bit of a new format. I will try to make sure that I am doing this once every week. Videos may be short. They may be long. I don't know. This is all new. We'll see what's going on. If you've enjoyed it, please make sure that you hit that like button. If you're new to my channel or you haven't done so yet, why not hit that subscribe button today? You'll make me very happy if you do. I would really love to get a picture of hitting 1,701 subscribers. That would be a pretty sweet picture. Anyway, for now, my name is Andrew and this is Canadian Starships. Have a great day, everyone.